Hi guys and welcome to your weekly horoscope. This one is for Monday the 30th of October, going through until Sunday the 5th of November 2023. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you today as always. I'm going to go through each day of the week to see what the planets are doing, how they interact and what energy they create. And the point of these horoscopes is to try and get a sense of what's coming up so you can make the most of the opportunities and the good stuff and avoid some of the challenges. Now with that said, Looking at this week, I don't think it's going to be the one of the easiest weeks of the entire year. I put down here that the first five days particularly are challenging emotionally. So there may be um, difficult conversations that you're having in terms of your relationships. Circumstances may turn out in a way which may prompt you to kind of overreact. And you may get this sense that, oh, I have to reel myself in all the time and I have to kind of be self-aware and kind of check in with myself to say, is this the best way to handle this? Is this a good response or am I in my feelings here? And that kind of inner work constantly, especially over a number of days, it can become tiresome, you know? So that's the first thing. So let's have a look at each day. Things do lighten up at the weekend considerably. But starting with Monday the 30th of October, we've got the Moon in Taurus and it forms a trine, so a harmonious relationship. With Pluto, the planet of transformation and change, and that's in the sign of Capricorn. So both of these, your feelings and the planet of change, are both in Earth signs. So there is a good sense on Monday morning particularly that I want to take charge of things and I want to um, make changes. It's sextiles, Neptune and Pisces. So the changes I want to make are based on my ideas, my hopes and dreams, the, the things that are going on for me internally that I deemed to be super important right now. The moon goes into Gemini at eight minutes past five in the afternoon. So Taurus is an earth sign that's fixed. So it's very much about taking the situation and kind of molding it into something that you want it to be. Gemini is far less controlling and it's just about, I want to find solutions. I want to open up to lots of new ideas. I want to find a way forward and I want to express myself. So with that shift into Gemini at the end of the day, things do kind of lighten up and particularly your own grip on things lightens up so that you're able to kind of multitask a bit more and that will make things easier. The Gemini moon then also squares Saturn in Pisces and it quincuxes the sun in Scorpio. So with Saturn in Pisces connecting to the moon, there's a greater sense of ease within myself. I'm not so rattled and easily kind of shaken. And the sun in Scorpio, I'm very connected to my feelings, but particularly in a way that says, how do I express these? How do I get um, what I'm seeing internally? How do I get that manifested into the real world? So on Monday, you already are in your feelings, but you're very constructive with them. And you're asking yourself, how can I channel these into some sort of particular area where it will grow and, and have a life of its own? So through work or your creative output. And that over the next few days then shifts and it becomes more about you. So you start to take things more personally and the perspective kind of shortens a little bit. So Monday is a good day in the sense that you're, you're able to tap into all of the earthy stuff. So you do start the new week here feeling practical, but also you may notice that emotionally you're more aware or sensitive than you usually are. And that may only feel a little unsettling on Monday. Um, and what complicates this even more is that we had an eclipse recently and a lot of deep-seated feelings kind of uh, were brought up during that eclipse because it was an opportunity to get clear on this is what I want and this is what I'm going to do in future. So, of course, the content came up via a lot of hidden feelings that may have been, a diff may have been kind of difficult to digest. So you may have some kind of residual fatigue from that whole process. So the best way to use the energy, I think, on Monday is to look at things in a productive way and things that make you feel good and make you feel like you're realizing your own ideas. That's the best way forward to keep it simple in that sense. So um, with the shift into Gemini, things do lighten up later on in the day. And there's a greater sense overall of I'm able to cope. And not only am I able to cope, but I, I find it easier now to handle things. And that's kind of on an upswing as the day progresses. Things may feel a little heavy to begin with this new week, but then um, it's like the, the, the burden is, is lifted or it's certainly lightened a lot. 
Tuesday the 31st, so Halloween, we've got the Moon in Gemini, that Queen Cux is the Sun, Mars, and Mercury in Scorpio, and it sextiles Chiron in Aries. So it's really kind of um, on theme here with all the energy in Scorpio. The Sun is what you're striving towards, it's your identity. Mars is drive, and Mercury is the communication planet. So with all of those in the water sign Scorpio, Scorpio is really about, in the astrology chart, traditionally it rules the um, eighth house, and that's really the house of the veil, the, you know, being able to pull that back and see into the other side. So it's everything occult and hidden and um, spiritual. So it's very on brand with this being Halloween. So in terms of those Halloween celebrations in general, you know, like as a bit of entertainment, this is a bit spooky or something, have fun. That works nicely. But also, you know, if you're looking at doing something on a deeper emotional level and you're genuinely looking at, you know, this is um, the time of year when light and dark are kind of balanced and I can pull the veil aside and get real answers for myself or even do some spiritual work. It's a good time for that because you're able to access your own feelings and connect to the other side as such. And then with the Gemini moon, it makes that even more possible because it's communicative and it's open. It's like a doorway, the actual symbol of Gemini. So lots of ideas, you're not focused on controlling things, and it's really about expressing yourself and experiencing things via other people and having a good time. Venus is in Virgo and it trines Uranus and Taurus. So again, what builds, which is really nice, kind of beneath the surface along all these other things, is this ongoing sense of I am not only able to cope very well with everything that's going on in my life, I'm getting better at it and I'm getting stronger every day. And I think that's significant because the, the eclipse was a lot. Um, I don't know about you guys, but for me, it, it, the time of year is really busy anyway. But this eclipse, it was just like, wow, it's just like, I feel like I'm on a wheel. And as soon as I finish one thing, there's another one to come up and it's on and on and on. And it's really like, I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm in, a, in a situation here that's kind of got a rhythm of its own. So if you felt something similar, that gets, the, the actual things don't ease off, but your ability to handle them becomes much better. So... It is Halloween, so people are going to be, you know, dressing up and doing things. But even if that's not on your radar, you know, if where you are, it's not something you celebrate. It is a good day for any kind of public event, um, for parties, for competitions, for meetings, anything where there are groups of people gathered. And the reason for that is communication will be very, very effective via the moon in Gemini. Um, if you're a writer trying to get work out and done, it's likely that the words come easily on this day because it's the combination of Gemini, air, idea and openness and willingness. And then water, Scorpio, all of the deep feelings and the actual content for what you're writing. So if you're a creative person, this is really good. Um, and like I said, the, the possible sense of overwhelm starts to really ease off. And it's replaced by this amazing sense of, of course I can do this. It's me, of course. Easy. So that's much easier to kind of deal with. So, I mean, on Monday, you know, on the plus side, you are productive, but it doesn't feel particularly warm and fuzzy. So if you just kind of hang in there and do what you can, things lighten up considerably by Tuesday and then Tuesday afternoon. Wednesday, the 1st of November, we've got the moon in Gemini now forming a square with Venus in Virgo and Neptune in Pisces and Equinox is Pluto in Capricorn. So things have really shifted. So you're not so much in your feelings now. You're looking at what you can do in a real world setting, what changes you can affect and how you can make things more suitable for what you are looking for. Mercury in Scorpio, Queen Cux is Chiron in Aries. So now it's kind of, um, I'm still feeling my feelings, but I'm starting to forget that I may have a tendency to overreact. Everything I feel is really, really on point and important and right. So, you know, that kind of sets you up for arguments. If you're always right, and no one really is, then other people may challenge that. So things start to get a little mm, crunchy in that sense here. There's, a, there's room for friction between you and other people. Um, 
Mercury in Scorpio, yes, I mentioned Queen Cux is Chiron in Aries. The moon then goes into Cancer at 11.30 in the evening, and the Cancer moon trines Saturn in Pisces. So that mitigates the other energy to a certain degree because you are going to be considerate of how you come across. So that self-scrutiny is still there. So Wednesday is a nice shift. You're out of all of the difficult feelings in earnest. It's a good day to get creative and to plan or to make plans for the future. Particularly if you feel like you're being taken advantage of or someone isn't genuinely interested in what you have to say, you may get a little heated around that and you may bristle at it and may get the sense of, oh, I want to clap back here. So in that case, you may lose your temper and may not want to hold back, but the, the outcome is likely to be that it escalates the situation. It's not likely that the other person says, oh, these things that are being said, maybe I hadn't considered those, maybe I'm wrong and they're right. That's very unlikely to happen. So there is room for potential conflict that doesn't really solve anything. So Wednesday, the 1st of November, I, I mean, in terms of if I'm choosing my day and what it's going to look like, I would prefer to have Wednesday the 1st of November be about solo creativity and really tapping into my hopes and dreams and to avoid the arguments altogether. So if that, there's a potential, if you feel something brewing, you know, <clears throat> in terms of arguments, relationships, watch out for Wednesday the 1st of November. If anything is going to boil over, it's likely that it boils over on that day. Tuesday, the 2nd, not Tuesday, Thursday, the 2nd of November, we've got the Cancer Moon forming a trine with the Sun in Scorpio and Mars in Scorpio. So we're still heavily, heavily in Scorpio season here. I mean, this time of year, because astrology is based on the Northern Hemisphere, right? So um, November is usually very dark and it's, it's about being able to identify rude things that only kind of exist in the shadows and having that conscious awareness that difficulties are normal and that they don't need to frighten me. But what I notice is that the atmosphere can sometimes become a really heavy, you know, because Scorpio and Taurus are on this axis of control. And when Scorpio gets involved at times, if it's, you know, unbridled unbrid and let loose, it can be somewhat controlling emotionally to the extent where other people feel like, oh, I have to adapt myself to this. And it just, again, becomes tedious. And that's the thing I keep picking up on is that, you know, things have been so busy and um, intense that you may get to a point where it's like, do you know what, enough, of, I don't want to hear this anymore. I'm going to wash my hands of this and walk away. So that's, that's quite an extreme reaction. And but that's how I feel this kind of building up to the extent where it's just like, I've tried to manage everything to keep everybody happy. And at some point, I'm going to have to say this is impossible. So on Thursday, I think you may reach that point. So again, if you've got a relationship that's kind of brittle and you're sitting on the fence between, oh my God, do I just end this and walk away? Or do I kind of try and maintain it? If anything comes up on Thursday the 2nd, the, you're much more in the camp of, I am walking away from this. It's pointless. Everything I've done and tried is not good enough. I can't keep working at this endlessly. You get to that set of place of saturation. It's all too much. Where can I take some of the pressure off? The sun is in Scorpio and it opposes Jupiter and Taurus. So it's a weird day because that doesn't feel very good, right? It's getting to a point of I'm emotionally done with this. I can't even pretend anymore. But the changes that occur as a result of those feelings on Thursday, the 2nd of November, in the long term are actually really good. But you may not have that awareness in the moment. So it's a difficult kind of day of trying to suss out, okay, what do I really respond to? Beginning of the week, I was aware that I could be a little overly sensitive. Am I still overly sensitive? Or am I genuinely done and it would make sense for me to move on? So those aren't easy questions. Ultimately, the key thing, whether it's positive or negative, something big is likely to occur on Thursday, the 2nd of November. And particularly, it's anything that causes you to have a big and bigger than usual emotional response. So in terms of negatives, it could be a huge row, you know, a huge argument. On the plus side, it could be meeting the love of your life or like winning some prize. So regardless of which way it goes, it's a day where everything is kind of under the microscope and things feel heightened. 
So it's important to really kind of be aware of how you're interacting and reacting to things and to deliberately put the reasonable hat on and to say, okay, I'm going to go about this as if I was emotionally placid and at peace, even though I'm not. Friday, the 3rd of November, we have the Sun in Scorpio opposing Jupiter in Taurus. So I think you may now on Friday be at a point where I just can't fight anymore. So it's an extension of really being over it the day before because the Sun in Scorpio is your identity and your feelings, right? And then the opposition with Jupiter and Scorpio, uh, with Jupiter and Taurus, it's like, oh, I'm constantly chasing something. This is too big for me to handle. Everything is over there and far to reach. Nothing is over here. It's just like, uh, you know, how much more can I do? <laughs> so, you know, certain things, that place of total exhaustion and I wash my hands of this, that doesn't happen all the time, right? Otherwise, relationships would just disappear every day. But because that place is so rare to get to, I think it can be an opportunity, especially, you know, if you've been in a situation that you don't like, and you know you don't like it, but you've rationalized it for whatever reason, security, or for the last 10 years, sometimes it's important to get to these moments to say, I can't fake this anymore. It has to end. I am not a resuscitation machine. So if you need to have that kind of experience or you need to get to that place and you never do, I think it's really likely that you do get to it. But on the flip side, if you at all costs want to maintain your relationships this week, then I would really just give the benefit of the doubt and reveal as little as possible so that there aren't, so you don't get the feedback, which then causes the emotional response. The Cancer Moon opposes Pluto and Capricorn. It squares Chiron in Aries, trines Mercury in Scorpio and Neptune in Pisces, and it sextiles Uranus in Taurus and Venus in Virgo. So, okay, so we've got this Sun connecting with absolutely everything in the chart. Venus in Virgo opposes Neptune in Pisces. So it's a, it's a challenging day. Do I continue to try and kind of listen to my feelings? And do I just... Does that mean giving up or continuing on? It's like, wow. So on Friday, I think with all that kind of overwhelming, difficult to make sense of energy floating around, I think it's a good day to take a break. So if you can on Friday, have some time for yourself, I think it would be a good idea. And if you look back on this week, you started out the week Monday and Tuesday, you were coming out of a funk, you know, at the end of the eclipse only to immediately be confronted by all these other issues immediately. So it's just like, oh my God, you know, I just hopped from one thing and straight into the other. Where's my break here? So I think if you can really try and um, put things aside on Friday, have a quiet moment for yourself. And if you can schedule in some you time on Friday. Saturday, the 4th of November, Saturn goes direct. Saturn is in outer planets. It's in Pisces at the moment. And it um, stays in retrograde for about half the year. <clears throat> it's an outer planet. So the retrogrades aren't as significant as the personal planets, which affect you personally. So Saturn goes direct until the 29th of June, 2024. And that's a nice thing because it means you find greater security out in the world, in your life. Whether that's this is a group I belong to or this is a sense of security I have in my job, or I know this person has my back, there's a greater sense of being settled. So that's positive. And also a greater sense of optimism as in terms of I can build something secure in the world and I can do that now. The moon goes into Leo at 921 in the morning. So that's positive because it fires you up. So it burns away all the worry and all the intense dark feelings. So things really lighten up significantly on Saturday. The Leo moon then um, squares Jupiter in Taurus and it quincuxes Saturn in Pisces. So the thing that's supported is behaving as if you don't have all these complicated thoughts in your head and just kicking a ball around or sitting in the sunshine or enjoying, you know, a nice afternoon by the beach. Really keep it simple. Enjoy your body. Enjoy the world. Enjoy a new sense of, oh, I'm less bogged down and less burdened and just take a moment to breathe. And that keeps coming up this week that it's important because no one's going to tell you, hey, you look a little stressed. I think you could take, I think you could use, you know, um, an hour in the park just to relax and calm down. It's very unlikely that someone's going to say that to you. So you have to kind of do it for yourself. 
So on Saturday, this glimmer of hope appears that life can become more manageable. So it's this ongoing thing which has been happening on the side the whole week. I feel more able to cope and that that has been building since the beginning. It's interesting. It's like a second player, like in the wings. Um, but that glimmer of hope then, it expands and becomes much, something much bigger and it, it changes more into a beacon of hope rather than a small little shard of light. And there's this great sense of um, energy that uplifts you and it gives you confidence and a sense of ease that everything is going to turn out fine. Everything is going to be okay. So it's a great day to just kind of enjoy the newfound sense of freedom and also a good day to socialize and to just have fun in however you prefer to do that. Finally, on Sunday, the 5th of November, we've got the moon in Leo. It forms a square with the sun, Mars and Mercury in Scorpio. So again, strong feelings are still there, but I'm able to process them and not take them so seriously and not take things so personally. So the, the tendency to overreact is kind of gone by the weekend. The Leo moon also um, squares Uranus and Taurus and it trines Chiron and Aries. So what can I do in a practical way that makes me happy? Is it going to the park or is it going for a run or is it eating something I enjoy? Really, again, grounded, practical, simple pleasures in life. Mars in Scorpio, Quincuxes, Chiron and Aries. So on Sunday, you are interested in kind of recharging your batteries, get, gathering your strength and healing and, and kind of just enjoying a, 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 like a grid that isn't heavily loaded with all these difficult emotions. But on the flip side of that, if someone shows up on Sunday and really makes your life difficult for what you see as a frivolous reason, I still feel that the bomb can really go off. You can really still explode if someone crosses you on Sunday. So you're not completely out of the woods yet. Oh. You know, if you're constantly arguing with people, I really, I don't know about you, but I'm at a point in my life where, you know, certain things I've heard for a long time now, and I just don't want to hear it anymore. I'm sorry. It's my life as well. Like, it's up to me. How do I want to live, right? And particularly if it's not constructive and it's just like the same old thing that just feels dreadful and, and like a burden. So I think it, this is the kind of week where you're reminded that, you know, you're not just like a number in this situation, you're a person with feelings. And you, you're not just going to take being um, run over all the time. And at some point, you're going to react. So you know, if things have been a bit prickly already, and um, there is going to be a crunch moment. This is the week when that's likely to happen. Excuse me, hiccups. <clears throat> okay, so that's what I get for you this week. I hope it gives you an idea of what you'll be working with. Um, I think the key thing, again, is to be kind to yourself and to just keep an eye on, you know, how am I? You know, when you feel like the anger build or the upset or the anxiety, often you can kind of feel it starting to build in your system and your nervous system tightens up and you start to get a sense of it. And what I'm saying this week is save yourself a lot of time and energy and work by not giving in to those because it's likely to be an argument or a scene which in itself is then exhausting and you have to recover from. So just try and skip it altogether. I just don't see a positive outcome as a result. I see the positive outcome you being creative and practical solo on your own. Yeah, and the whole social thing and opening up, I think, is much better at the weekend. Yeah, because then you actually get something out of it. Okay, so that's what I get for you this week. I hope that gives you something to go on and an idea of what you'll be working with. If you would like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your reading to audio reading with me. And in my personal readings, I use astrology, the tarot, numerology, and my intuition. I combine all of them to answer any questions you may have. So if you're... Um, looking at your life purpose, what that is, or strengths, weaknesses, your, your personality as a whole. Also, if you're looking at what's coming up in future or even what locations work for me, I use the progress chart, the transit, astrocartography for that. 
Um, yeah, so if you have any questions about what's happening now, what's coming up in future, and you want a second pair of eyes, then please do get in touch with me for that. I also still do the daily tower readings on this channel, and they're available to members. So thank you to everyone who has become a member. But if you're wondering where the daily tarot is gone, it's still up there. So please consider becoming a member of the channel and getting access to those again. Have a wonderful week here. I hope you have a great time. And I will speak to you for the daily tower readings, the videos on the full moons and the new moons and the eclipses. We had one recently on the 28th of October, so check that out. Eclipses, the influences last for about six months. So if you want to get more info on that, have a look at that video. Have a great week and I'll speak to you soon. All the best.